is Iman Gadri, the new Andrew Tate. Iman has just blown past 1 million subscribers on YouTube, and by the time you're watching this, he's probably on much, much more. In the last 30 days alone, he's gained over 300,000 subscribers, putting him in a league of his own when it comes to growing on the platform. You might think this simply comes down to him uploading more regularly this year, but there's something else that's going on beneath the surface. After all, there are similar channels run by other young and successful entrepreneurs that aren't growing nearly as quickly. Iman has tapped into something his peers simply haven't, something that captivates an audience and makes them hungry for more. And it's the same X factor Andrew Tate has that made him blow up as much as he did. Except unlike Andrew, Iman is achieving this level of success at just 22 years old. So what exactly is it about Iman that makes him different from the rest? And how has he managed to attract this large of an audience in such a short space of time? With so many new followers, many don't know that Iman's been posting on YouTube since he was 15 years old. He's part of a small group of content creators who've documented their entire journey from broke teen to successful entrepreneur. After his mum and stepdad broke up when he was 14, Iman and his mother were plunged into a difficult financial situation and he began desperately searching for ways to make money. At first he started buying and selling Instagram accounts but after some initial success he ended up losing all the money he made. Then he monetized his passion for fitness by training some of his friend's parents and put together a few hundred pounds. He used this money to invest in his first ever camera. This was when he created his YouTube channel and started posting content. In the beginning he only made fitness videos but it wasn't long before he started posting about his business ventures. Iman played football at a high level during school but realized he wasn't good enough to make a career out of it. After deciding to quit, he spoke to the owner of the club he played for and offered to run all of their social media accounts. He took a small fee of just £300 a month but Iman was over the moon that he'd landed his first ever business client. It took him over seven months to land his next clients but after he did, he managed to land a couple more in quick succession. He charged them much more than his first clients and after signing all three, he was making a little over £4,000 a month. Iman was meticulous with his work and did everything in his power to get to the top of his game. Not only did he prioritize his health and fitness, but he built a habit of meditating and for years he committed to reading a book a week. Now once I've woken up, I've gone to the gym, steam room, sauna, and I come back home, I meditate, then I read like 30 pages to 50 pages of a book, depending on um, whatever it takes to read a book a week that week. At this point, Iman was 17 years old and this was when he made the life-changing decision to drop out of school. It was a massive risk to take, but not long after, he locked in a couple more clients and officially launched his social media marketing agency, IAG Media. He was making over six figures, which allowed him to move from home into his own place. However, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows because along the way, there were a significant number of challenges Iman had to overcome. My first employee stays with me for a week and then he basically decides, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. I'm out of here. I lose 50% of my total revenue. My apartment, that falls through. Then in August, I lose 50% of my clients. And look, some of that lost revenue wasn't in my control, but some of it was. And some of it was because I got so numb to what brought me to success in the first place, which is constantly being a student, constantly keeping my ego intact. Despite his struggles, he persevered. And over the next couple of years, Iman brought in bigger and higher paying clients, hired a full-time team, and reached a level of income most people only dream of. He was posting on YouTube every step of the way, and people started reaching out out wanting to know how to start their own agencies. Instead of coaching individual clients, Iman decided to create a course which he called Six Figure SMMA and this became the first building block for his education platform, Grow Your Agency. He released various different resources on the platform and just like IAG Media, this business became a massive financial success. The following two years were the most profitable Iman ever had. His agency and education platform raked in millions and he even dabbled in some other business ventures, launching an eyewear company and his own NFT project. Though arguably the big biggest business move he made in this time was launching his software company, Agency Flow, a platform for agency owners to manage all aspects of their business. In September 2021, Iman came to the decision to leave London where he'd grown up and move all the way to Dubai. He said he wasn't happy with the way the UK government was running the country and felt he lacked freedoms he could get in other places in the world. This was much the same reason why Tate moved from London to Romania back in 2017. The other reason was that he wanted to operate his businesses from somewhere more tax efficient. At the time of his move, the UAE had 0% corporate, personal income, and capital gains tax, so it wasn't going to get any better than that. After making the move, Iman spent a few months settling in and enjoying his new lifestyle before he set his sights on 2022. In January, he released a video outlining his goals for that year, one of which was to reach 500,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. At the time, he was sitting on roughly 180,000, so this seemed like an ambitious goal, but he'd started taking steps toward making this happen. He hired a YouTube SEO specialist to optimize his video titles and ensure they rank as well 
well as possible in search, and he committed to a more consistent upload schedule. He came out with videos like best online businesses to start as a beginner, eight money tips for teenagers to become millionaires, three habits that made me a millionaire by 18. Gone were the days of making niche SMMA videos, and instead his new content was designed for a much broader audience. He hired three thumbnail editors who have made a significant difference to how clickable his videos are, and he began incorporating sleek edits and B-roll to spice things up. All of these changes increased his click-through and audience retention stats, which made YouTube promote his content more and more. On top of this, there was another crucial change Iman made to his videos that elevated their quality and improved engagement. In his older content, he'd go on long, unstructured talks, taking a lot more time than necessary to get to the point. But his newer videos are far more compact and hard-hitting. Iman's not nearly as well-spoken as someone like Andrew Tate, so a more structured video suits him much better. He goes on far fewer tangents and speaks clearly and confidently, which makes him seem far more credible. And that's something that's very important to him, credibility. In almost all of his videos, he references how much money he's made or how successful he is at such a young age. This year, pre-tax, I'll do close to 10 million. I made almost $25 million. So I made a million dollars uh, in February. If I never make a penny ever again, I don't care. I'm fine. I have over 10 million. I'm good. Multi-millionaire, the girls, the travel, the good body, social status, you know, everything, you name it. I had it. This is very intentional because for any new viewers watching, it signals to them that he's the real deal and he knows what he's talking about. It's the exact same reason we've heard Tate introduce himself like this a hundred times. My name is Andrew Tate, four-time kickboxing world champion, multi-millionaire and all-around nice guy. It's about knowing how to sell yourself and Iman is really good at that. But beyond the material success, what separates Iman from many others is his lifestyle. He regularly talks about the insane parties he goes to, the high-profile people he knows, and the beautiful woman he spends his time with. Even just the simple fact he now lives in Dubai, one of the most luxurious and beautiful cities in the world, is something that people envy. And when you combine this with a YouTube channel that instructs people on how to become financially free and live this type of lifestyle too, you've got a recipe for success. Much of the reason Andrew Tate became so popular was also because of this. He seemingly had it all. The money, the woman, the lifestyle, the connections. And this was something he'd never forget to remind you of. When Andrew decided he wanted to grow his social media presence, his strategy involved appearing on several different popular podcasts. He then had the affiliates of his online course, Hustlers University, post clips of these interviews all over TikTok and YouTube to promote him. His plan couldn't have been more successful. He became the most talked about man on the planet and Ema was paying attention. What Tate did, I mean, he was just fucking genius. He killed it. Absolutely. In the last few months, Iman's appeared on numerous different podcasts, talking about his businesses, personal life, and everything in between. His intention with this is to emulate Tate's growth strategy, except Iman thinks he can do it in a smarter way. He believes part of the reason things turned sour for Tate was because he used affiliates to spread his content. He said that by nature, affiliates are incentivized to post the clips that spark the most controversy, and for Tate, many of the questionable things he said in the past would constantly be reposted. Although Iman isn't anywhere near as controversial as Tate, even the most PC influencers can look like they've said something wrong if their words are taken out of context. To avoid that situation altogether, Iman's taken the distribution of his content into his own hands and had his team create 22 different shorts channels across YouTube and TikTok. These channels constantly pump out clips from his podcasts and YouTube content, racking up millions of views. While this isn't nearly the same scale as what Andrew did, it shows Iman's desire to achieve similar results. But the similarities between the two go beyond just their lifestyles and finances. Iman shares many of the same world views as Tate and has said that he agrees with almost everything Andrew says. Look, I'll be honest, I actually agree with 90 8% of everything he says. Yeah. One of the more controversial topics they agree on is their views on monogamy. Both Iman and Andrew have said they expect their partner to be 100% loyal to them, but at the same time be okay with them having relations with other women. They believe that the same rules don't apply to men and women, and that men, especially those with their level of status, should have the freedom to choose between multiple women. I'm in an open relationship, obviously, just on my side though. What if she said, I want an open relationship too? Never, no chance. And a good woman would never say that. If you marry this girl, I'll cheat. You would have already I'll cheat. cheat. So society tells you to marry one woman and be loyal, right? And then you have me saying, men are not supposed to do that. We don't want to do that. Any man who sits there and says, I want to do that is lying. He wants to keep the woman he loves and he wants the woman he loves to be happy. But if he could keep the woman he loves and keep her happy and have other women, he would. But perhaps most relevant of all, Iman and Andrew share the belief that we are on the brink of a new dark age, an age where the average man becomes a slave to the system, where what we can and cannot say is determined by our social credit scores and where the ability for us to speak our minds without fear 
idea of consequence is a thing of the past. They say it's already starting to happen, that in today's society, our right to freedom of speech is being taken from us and we're being controlled more and more by the day. To Iman, the deplatforming of Tate is a perfect example of this, but he says it goes beyond that. Just the fact that our government could lock us in our homes and prevent us from seeing our dying loved ones makes him sick. Iman talks of an elite class of people he calls the puppet masters that pull the strings and force feed us lies through the media. Both he and Tate believe that if we're not extremely careful, we'll find ourselves in a world where they have the ultimate power and we become mere slaves. Now the fact is we are in a situation today where the puppet masters are on the verge of successfully implementing their mass control plan. And if you think slavery was abolished centuries ago, think again, because the number of slaves in this world has never been as high as it is today. They're just modern day slaves. I really believe we're living in a pivotal point of history. As AI gets better, as technology gets better, as they get more and more control over the money and the way people think and the way people move, I think that absolute slavery and tyranny is coming to the entire world. I think our children's children will live as slaves. I think the idea of social mobility will be absolutely not really destroyed. You're going to be born into a class and that's where you're going to belong and stay. If you say the wrong thing or think the wrong thing, you're going to be punished for it. And I think this is one of our last chances to fight and I think it's a battle of good versus evil is genuinely God against the demons. Iman has put together an event he calls the digital renaissance where he speaks about the dangers that lie ahead if we do not act. He says the decisions we make now will affect our entire lineage and it's up to us to obtain the financial, location and time freedom necessary to become the new renaissance man. The only way this can turn out well for you, for me, for your future children, for your future wife, for your grandchildren, and the rest of your lineage and your blood is if you step up, you have to become one of the new Renaissance men, one of the men that will push society forward. The men who will stop the puppet masters from enslaving the population and taking us into another dark age. Whether you agree with what Iman and Andrew are saying or not, it's clear that these two are alike in many ways. After growing his following so much this year, Iman has found himself in a very similar position to Tate. A position of influence and reach with the ability to impact today's generation of young men. And given the uncertain times we're living in, this is a great responsibility to have. From what we've seen, Iman's painting a similar image as Andrew for what a successful man looks like. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up to you to decide. But there's one thing I can say for certain. Iman's only just getting started.